as the world turns. Brought to you by Instant Niagara and new Niagara Spray Starch, famous products of best food. Hello, I'm from the Home Service Department of Niagara. Board. That's an experiment that was done at the Good Housekeeping Institute to show how new Niagara A breeze. Shirt collars, children's clothes, all your smaller things. For your larger things, or when you have a lot to starch, use Instant Niagara with the exclusive washer starching method. Just pour Niagara into the washer. It's the only packaged dry starch that works this way. Niagara's deep, penetrating action gives long-lasting beauty to sheets, curtains, even slipcovers. See how fresh and lightly smooth Never stiff or boardy. So for the two most convenient ways to starch, get Instant Niagara for washer starching, Niagara Spray Starch for spray starching. So effective, they've earned the good housekeeping seal. Mom, it's almost nine o'clock. What's that going to be? Oh, this is going to be a bulky knit sweater for your son for Christmas. You know, sometimes I wonder about all you grandmothers. Why is it you always have to be making something for your... Well, us grandmothers. How many of us do you know? Well, I know you pretty well. I imagine you're pretty typical. After all, you could go downtown and buy a bulky sweater. And miss all the fun of having made it. So that's it. Of course. Well, since you enjoy it so much, how about making Tom's father a king-size model? For Christmas? Well, I'm uh, just planting the seed, Mom. The rest is up to you. Well, of course, I could go downtown and buy you one. And miss all that fun? Not you, Mom. Well, I'm not making any promises, Bob. Well, if you want it to be a surprise, you can check the size in my shirts. Be neck Very nice. Oh, I see. Well... You know how busy I am before the holidays. I'm kidding, Mom. Where's the rest of the family? Your father and grandfather and sister all went out together. For a walk? Yes, they went to the village. Grandpa wanted to buy something or other, and uh, tonight he felt like having some company. How's Lisa? It was a quick switch. You just saw her, didn't you? Actually, I just took Tom home. You took him home early tonight. A little early, I guess. You still haven't answered my question. Well, Lisa, she's pretty good. It's been some time since she's called here, and I might add, it's been some time since I've phoned her. That's the way you want it, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's the way it will be. Look, Mom, do you, uh, do you think you could set two more places at the Thanksgiving table? Whom did you invite? I asked Lisa to bring Tom over. I suppose that's all right with you. You suppose it's all right with me? Well, how did you happen to invite Lisa and Tommy for Thanksgiving? Well, uh, let's see, how did that happen? Well, I, I knew you wanted your grandson to be here. You knew I wanted Lisa to be here, too, didn't you? Of course. Are you telling me that's why you invited her? Did I say that? Not too long ago, when I wanted Lisa to come over for grandfather's, your grandfather's 70th birthday, and I suggested that you do the inviting, what kind of an answer did I get? You want her, you invite her. Evidently, you want Lisa here for Thanksgiving. Look, Mom, I'm not quite the ogre you think I am. 
I, I just didn't want to have Lisa spend Thanksgiving alone. Uh, I don't think it's right. That's very interesting coming from you. My well, mom stopped carping at me. I think I did a very nice thing, or don't you think so? Yes, I think it was a very nice thing, dear. A very nice gesture. Maybe uh, someday you'll tell me why you did it. right here, doesn't it? Then get New Soft Fabric Softener. Just one capful and the final rinse and New Soft proves you can cut ironing time because New Soft renews the life detergents wash away. These pants were washed in detergent. They're stiff, wrinkled, need ironing. These pants were washed in the same detergent then rinsed with New Soft. They're soft, wrinkle-free, need no ironing. Look at the difference New Soft makes. Many clothes you just fold and put away. No ironing because New Soft renews the life detergents wash away. Now, thanks to New Soft, I have more time to play with the baby. What you doing, Nancy? Cleaning up in here already? Well, yes, that's right. I think it's a little early for that, ain't Anna coming tomorrow? No, as a matter of fact, she isn't. She called just a little while ago and said that she's sick with flu or something. So I thought I'd better get started in here now. Of course, I won't finish today. Oh, Nancy, the house is always clean. You know why? Because something is always done about it. If I let it get ahead of You know of what me... I think? You do too much cleaning around here. Grandpa, do I tell you you do too much work in your workshop? Well, that's different. Uh, can I help? If you really want to. Well, I wouldn't ask if I didn't want to. We can start putting the books back, then. Oh, these poor books. They come off the shelf time and time again. They're getting worn out and coming off so often. Oh, Grandpa, stop criticizing. <laughs> oh, Nancy, you're a good housekeeper. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is there are other things that are more important. Really? Like having a cup of coffee. How about it? But if you'd like to get some coffee, we'll take a break. It won't take but a minute, Nancy, and it'll do us both good. I'm sure it will. Feel mighty good this morning, don't you? I always feel good, Grandpa. Uh, here's your coffee. Uh, thank you. You know something? I'm very fond of you. <laughs> I kind of guessed that. Uh, tell me now, what happened? Happened? Ain't too often I hear you humming. And when you do, something happened. You know me too well. Sometimes I think you know me better than Chris does. I think I do. I have some very interesting information. Your great-grandson and his mother are going to have Thanksgiving dinner with us. Did you ask, Lisa? No. Bob did. Bob? When did you hear this? He told me last night after he came home. Well, I must say I'm surprised. Well, frankly, I was a little suspicious. Of what? Oh, Grandma, there has to be a reason why Bob asked Lisa, because this is the first time he's invited her here or anywhere else, as a matter of fact, since they've been divorced. Did you ask him why he invited her? He said something about not wanting her to have Thanksgiving dinner alone. He didn't think it was right. <laughs> it was real nice of the boy. And I thought about it, and I gave it a great deal of thought, Grandpa. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas, 
The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. More details just arrived. These details about the same as previously. President Kennedy shot today just as his motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed Mr. Kennedy. She called, oh no, the motorcade sped on. United Press says that the wounds for President Kennedy perhaps could be fatal. Repeating, a bulletin from CBS News, President Kennedy has been shot by a would-be assassin in Dallas, Texas. Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. It takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee. That's why Nescafe has come up with a new kind of coffee. It's more than an instant. It's new Minute Brew Nescafe. Anybody can make a coffee more instant, but Nescafe makes it more coffee. A new kind of coffee. Minute Brew. Minute Brew Nescafe is a new discovery. A new way to hold in extra rich flavor. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer for all that extra flavor to come out. In other words, with Minute Brew Nescafe, it takes a little longer, but you get a lot more coffee. If you agree it takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee, buy this completely new kind of coffee today. New Minute Brew Nescafe. It's more than an instant, yet costs no more. New Minute Brew Nescafe. The first portion of this program has been brought to you by New Soft Fabric Softener. New Soft renews the softness detergents wash away, another famous product of Best Foods. We'll continue with As the World Turns following station identification. Follow Todd and Link to a mountain adventure with a pretty girl on Route 66 tonight on the CBS television network. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. Further details on an assassination attempt against President Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy was shot as he drove from Dallas Airport to downtown Dallas. Governor Connolly of Texas in the car with him was also shot. It is reported that three bullets rang out. A Secret Service man has been, was heard to shout from the car, he's dead. Whether he referred to President Kennedy or not is not yet known. The president, cradled in the arms of his wife, Mrs. Kennedy, was carried to an ambulance and the car rushed to Parkland Hospital outside Dallas. The president was taken to an emergency room in the hospital. Other White House officials were in doubt and the, in the corridors of the hospital as to the condition of President Kennedy. Repeating this bulletin, President Kennedy shot while driving in an open car from the airport in Dallas, Texas, to downtown Dallas. Recou recounting again the details of this incident, three shots were heard to ring out as Kennedy and Governor Connolly and Mrs. Kennedy rode in the back seat of the open car. Immediately, a Secret Service man said he saw blood spurt from the president's head. He fell into the laps of Mrs. Kennedy, and Mrs. Kennedy shouted, oh, no. Governor Connolly was seen to crumple also. The car sped on, the motorcade speeded up, rushed to Parkland Hospital in Dallas, where the President and Governor Connolly were rushed to the emergency room. A Secret Service man was heard to say he's dead as the President was lifted from the rear of the White House touring car, the famous bubble top from Washington, and taken into the hospital. Reporters about five car lengths behind the chief executive heard what sounded like that three bursts of gunfire. We will keep you advised as more details come in. The incident has taken place only in the last few minutes in Dallas.
Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. I've got a hunch. I don't know if I should say anything about it, because I may not be right, but I uh, have an idea that your sister's been pushing a few checkers around on the checkerboard. Penny? Yes. Are you saying you think that she had something to do with it? Mm-hmm. How could she have anything to do with it? Well, Bob, what you don't know is that uh, Penny has talked to me several times about trying to interest Neil into going back into medicine. Oh, I, I didn't know that. No, I'm sure you didn't. Well, I told Penny that if Neil was going back, go back into medicine, that he'd have to do it on his own, without any push or pull from me or any other doctor. I mean, not from her, either, as a matter of fact. But Dr. Casco, she's, uh, she's talked to him, too. You see, Doug, feels differently about Neil than I do. Why, I don't know. Do you think that Penny asked him to? I'd be my hunch, yes. I'm surprised. And yet I'm not. Must we get a menu? Waiter? I'd like to order, I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, so am I. We'll return to As the World Turns in just a moment. Hmm, I see you have a new family. The youngsters are such a big responsibility. I'm sure you'll be glad to hear about new Frisky's Puppy Food, designed to meet the needs of growing puppies. Frisky's is so nourishing. It has 15 added vitamins and minerals. All the protein puppies need to build strong bodies, sturdy bones, and sound teeth. And it has frisky special beef flavoring. Go ahead, Mother. Help yourself. It's great for you, too. New Frisky's Puppy Food in two sizes. Made by Carnation. They love dogs, too. Searching for a great new taste in dog food? Discover new Frisky's Magic Sauce Cubes. Here's a bulletin from CBS News. President Kennedy has been the victim of an assassin's bullets in Dallas, Texas. It is not known as yet whether the president survived the attack against him. The incident was this. The president, Mrs. Kennedy, and Governor Connolly of Texas driving in the president's famed bubble top car from Dallas airport to downtown Dallas where the president was scheduled to make a speech. Three bullet shots were heard to ring out. The president slumped into the lap of Mrs. Kennedy. Witnesses said they saw blood streaming from his head. Governor Connolly slumped into the bottom of the car. Bullet wounds were seen to be in his chest. The car itself rushed on as Mrs. Kennedy was heard to say, oh no. It took him directly to a nearby hospital, the Parkland Hospital, where the president and Governor Connolly were taken into the emergency room and witnesses there refused to comment on whether the president was still alive or not. As the bullets were heard to wing out of the assassin's gun, Ser Secret Service men unlimbered their automatic rifles, but the damage, of course, by then had been done. As these details come in, let us read a few to you from the press service wires reaching us only now from Dallas. After these three loud bursts of gunshot, Dallas motorcycle officers escorting the president quickly leaped from their bikes and raced up a grassy hill. At the top of a hill, a man and woman appeared huddled on the ground. In the turmoil, it has been impossible so far to determine whether the Secret Service and Dallas police returned the gunfire that struck down Kennedy and Connolly, or whether this couple at the top of the hill crouched down their inert forms uh, as the police rushed them were the would-be assassins. Stay tuned for further details from CBS News. We'll bring you details now, more details on the attempted assassination of President Kennedy. 
Mrs. Kennedy was on her knees, we're told, on the floor of the rear seat of the car, her head toward the president, apparently uh, leaning over and trying to converse with him. AP reporter who was with the group said that this man and woman we reported earlier were on a hilltop, were seen scrambling to the upper level of a walkway overlooking an underpass to which the car was approaching. Lawrence O'Brien, the presidential aide, says he has no information on whether the president is still alive. Mrs. Kennedy was weeping, trying to hold up her hus husband's head when the reporters reached the car as it dashed toward the hospital. Vice President Lyndon Johnson was in the car behind the president. There was no immediate sign that he was hurt. Repeating that, no indication Vice President Johnson was hurt. In fact, there was no evidence at all at what might have happened to Johnson since only the president's car and its Secret Service follow-up car went on to the hospital. Let us recount this incident again. There has been an assassination attempt against the life of President John F. Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. The President, Mrs. Kennedy, and Governor Connolly of Texas en route from the Dallas airport to a speech the President was scheduled to make at noon in Dallas were in the President's famed bubble top car driving through cheering crowds in the streets of Dallas when three shots rang out. The president slumped into the lap of Mrs. Kennedy, apparently a bullet wound in his head. Governor Connolly slumped to the floor of the car. Bullet wounds were seen in his chest. The Mrs. Kennedy screamed out, oh no. The car stopped momentarily. Secret Service men unloaded their rifles and started to into the crowd. Two uh, persons, a man and a woman, were seen crouched with a crowd around them on a hilltop overlooking the road. Whether they were concerned in the shooting or not, we do not know yet. Secret Service men rushed to that scene and were waiting a report on that. Vice President Johnson was in the car immediately following President Kennedy and Governor Connolly. He was not hurt as far as we are able to determine. The President and Governor Connolly were rushed to a nearby hospital, Parkland Hospital, where they were taken into the emergency room and we have no information yet as to how serious the injuries were. However, aides very close to President Kennedy uh, had no comment when they were asked by reporters the seriousness of the President's injuries. Late information just in, Acting White House Secretary Malcolm Kildrup was asked whether the President was dead, and he said, I have no word now. The President had landed just a short time before, as we said, at Dallas Love Field. He was driving to the Trade Mart in Dallas to deliver this luncheon speech which was to be sponsored by three Dallas organizations. The largest turnout of the current Texas tour was on the streets to greet Kennedy. He was being uh, greeted lavishly by the crowd in a very warm uh, Texas welcome when the bullet, bu bu bullet uh, fired out of the crowd. Stay tuned. We'll bring you the details just as quickly as they come in. It might be recalled that Dallas has been a hotbed of criticism of President Kennedy and his administration by outspoken rightist groups. Only two weeks ago, uh, Ambassador Adley Stevenson of the United Nations was in an incident in Dallas when he was besieged by pickets, far right-wing pickets, outside of a speech he made there, and he was struck in the head by a picket sign by an outraged conservative who felt we should not be in the United Nations. Even today, through Dallas, there were cars touring the streets with signs, U.S. or U.N. A little late information, Rear Admiral George Berkeley, the United States Navy, the White House physician, rushed into that Parkland Hospital in Dallas. He headed for the emergency room where the President and Governor Connolly were taken. We're still awaiting word as to the condition of the President from that emergency room. Governor Connolly of Texas is the young governor who managed the campaigns of Lyndon Johnson over the uh, last several senatorial and vice presidential campaigns of Johnson's. 
He is a leader of what is considered the more conservative wing of the Democratic Party in Texas. Part of the reason for President Kennedy's being in Texas was said was to try to patch up differences between the conservative and liberal wings of the Democratic Party, which uh, it was believed endangered the chances of the administration uh, taking Texas in the 1964 election. Let's recount again that President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas lie in the emergency room at Parkland Hospital in Dallas as an anxious world waits to learn how serious are the injuries that they suffered from an assassin's bullet. President Kennedy has been injured apparently in the head, Governor Connolly of Texas in the chest. Three bullet shots were heard to ring out as the president's car drove through the crowded streets of Dallas on the outskirts from the airport toward downtown. Further details now as we are learn that the motorcade uh, was so strung out as a result of the speedy Secret Service departure from the scene of the shooting that members of the Kennedy staff were from 15 minutes to a half hour behind in reaching the hospital. It was impossible, they tell us now, under the tension at the hospital to assemble any clear-cut story of the incident uh, because the burst of gunfire, of course, took only seconds and from there on out, confusion. Some of the Secret Service agents thought the gunfire, however, was from an automatic weapon fired to the right rear of the chief executive's car, possibly from a grassy knoll, and that's that knoll to which motorcycle policemen uh, were seen racing and where the huddled figures of a man and a woman were seen on the ground with a crowd surrounding them, which suggests, of course, that perhaps this is where the shots came from. This we do not know as yet positively. A late bulletin, Representative Albert Thomas, the Democrat from Houston, Texas, says that he has been informed that President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas are uh, still alive, or at least were still alive at the last word he had a few moments ago from Parkland Hospital. This is the first word we have had definitely from the emergency room, giving some hope that they survived this assassination attempt. The last assassination attempt against a president of the United States was that attack against President Truman when he was living at Blair House in Washington and Puerto Rican nationalists charged the Blair House steps, attempted to enter Blair House, if this reporter's memory is correct, about 1951 that incident took place. They were cut down by Secret Service agents, but a Secret Service man died thwarting that attempt to enter Blair House. The president, uh, Truman, at the time was only uh, barely aware of what was going on. He, as a matter of fact, uh, watched the incident from the uh, upstairs windows after the shooting took place on Pennsylvania Avenue at Blair House. This incident recalls the incident at which Franklin Delano Roosevelt was, was an intended victim and where Mayor Chermak of Chicago uh, died in an assassination attempt in Florida. And President Roosevelt was on a tour, of course, many years ago. Recounting the episode again for you, President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas were shot as they were driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, assassins unknown as yet, their condition unknown. It is believed that President Kennedy was hit in the head, Governor Connolly in the chest. We'll be back in uh, 10 seconds to allow all our stations to identify themselves and to join the network.
crime guide in our newsroom in... There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. We have not been told their condition at Dallas. In the downtown hotel room, a group had been gathered to hear President Kennedy when he was waiting his arrival. Let's switch down there now, where Eddie Barker of KRLD is on the air. We're trying to get that connection to Dallas now. Just as soon as we uh, can get Dallas on the air, we you so, shall see the scene at the hotel where we understand that the audience is just being told about the incident in their city, the shooting of President Kennedy and of Governor Connolly. A word just in from Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth says that he understands that both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly, while seriously wounded, are still alive. Okay. Okay, go ahead, switch it. This is the uh, safety precautions that were taken here at the trademark, uh, certainly among some of the most extensive that have ever been taken for uh, the visits of anyone to this city. And as of this hour, uh, it, of course, is all for naught due to the fact that uh, there was an attempt made on the president's life. There had been earlier speculation that perhaps if there was any trouble, it would have uh, come at the airport where the president, if you uh, were watching uh, television and listening to the radio earlier this morning, uh, you uh, heard that he uh, went up to the fence, went up to the crowd, and uh, was uh, mixing uh, quite closely. He uh, shook hands with many supporters. That were There was a, there was a, uh, air, an air of uh, congeniality on the part of the crowd. This trademark is approximately a mile and a quarter from the point where the attempted assassination took place. The uh, trademark, this huge market hall, is uh, located just to the northwest of the downtown business area. The president's motorcade had taken him from the airport uh, down uh, Lemon Avenue, one of the familiar thoroughfares here in Dallas, to Turtle Creek, down past the Democratic uh, County headquarters, and on into the downtown area. The uh, procession came up Main Street, one of the uh, three principal thoroughfares in downtown Dallas, and as it, it was just uh, beginning to leave the downtown area and come out here to uh, this hall when the attempted assassination took place. The announcement uh, was made to the crowd just a few minutes ago as to what uh, had uh, transpired. No report on the condition of the president as yet. Yes, Dick, there, is, there is an unconfirmed report, Eddie, that the president is in critical condition, that Governor Conley has gone to the operating room. This is an unconfirmed report. That the president is in critical condition and that uh, Governor Conley is now in the operating room. And also the fact that uh, one of the Secret Service agents who was riding with the president was killed. Is that, that, that is the report at this moment. Dick, has there uh, been any report uh, as to whether or not the assassin uh, was apprehended? Nothing on the apprehension as yet. We still have that same uh, street corner that you mentioned to go by. That's all so far. Nothing other than uh, the fact that at the intersection of Elm and Houston Streets, just west of the downtown area, uh, is where the attempted assassination took place. There is a look of uh, shocked disbelief on this crowd that uh, has turned out for the president. Uh, safety precautions here probably have never been greater. It was only a couple of weeks ago that an incident occurred here that uh, caused some to think that it would have been better had President Kennedy not gone ahead with his announced plans of coming to Dallas. That was when the United Nations Ambassador Adlai Stevenson made a, a speech at uh, the Memorial Theater in Dallas. You may recall that at that time, there was quite a rhubarb inside the uh, theater proper as Mr. Stevenson tried to speak. 
one man, a Frank McGee, he who is the leader of the National Indignation Convention, a group of extreme rightists here, tried to interrupt uh, the ambassador. Uh, he was ejected from the hall. Then later, when Mr. Stevenson left the hall and tried to uh, go to his car, he stepped away from his uh, police protection for a minute and into the arms of a very hostile crowd. A uh, woman hit him with a placard, and he was also spat upon by a 23-year-old Dallasite. This uh, caused, of course, the fact that uh, the precautions for the presidential visit went to extremes that have not been known here before. Uh, the report is that the attempted assassins, we now hear it was a man and a woman who uh, fired the shots, were on the ledge of a building near the Houston Street underpass. Uh, just from memory, that would... Uh... That was a report from Eddie Barker at our affiliate KRLD in Dallas, Texas. The scene you saw was the luncheon to which uh, President Kennedy was en route. He was planning to address that luncheon in uh, one of his strongest statements yet against the, uh, those who, as he said, would return uh, this, uh, turn this, the clock back, uh, but he did not get an opportunity to make that speech. He was cut down by bullets as his motorcade approached downtown Dallas. He is now in the emergency room of Parkland Hospital in Dallas. He is remaining in the emergency room because uh, Secret Service aides say that the facilities there are as good as elsewhere. They have moved Governor Connolly, who was also cut down by those bullets, uh, to uh, the operating room at Parkland Hospital. Mrs. Uh, Kennedy, who was in the car with Governor Johnson, and uh, or Governor Connolly, rather, and President Kennedy was not injured, but was said to be in a state of shock and is stunned. Uh, she had, was heard to cry out, oh, no, as the bullets rang out and the president slumped into her lap with, uh, it is reported, a bullet wound in the head. Governor Connolly was shot apparently twice in the chest, although we do not have details of their injuries. As of 10 minutes ago, a White House aide said that the president was uh, still alive. The extent of his injury, uh, the, whether it is indeed critical or not, uh, is not, has not been officially confirmed by doctors from Parkland Hospital. Whether the assassin has been caught or not is not known as yet either. The early reports indicate, however, that a man was arrested by police and Secret Service agents. We're awaiting further details on that. There's a picture for the motorcade wall that's just before the incident. Thank you, Don. This picture has just been transmitted by wire. It is a picture taken just a moment or two before the incident. If you can zoom in with that camera, we can get a closer look at this picture. You can see the president in an open car. The uh, famed bubble top was not being used today. The president out in the open on a balmy uh, Texas day. It had been raining earlier in Fort Worth when he made an appearance there to cheering crowds in a, a parking lot there. And the, earlier in the day, in this festive day, uh, Mrs. Kennedy had made an appearance at a breakfast there, too, and was wildly cheered. You see the president here, a motorcycle policeman who undoubtedly was deeply involved in this matter before it was all over immediately behind. And right over in here, you can perhaps see some of the Secret Service agents who were undoubtedly involved as well. They were not able to prevent the president being well, shot. Back to Dallas. Prayers now for the president. Right. We're now going into that Dallas uh, luncheon the president had planned to address. Let's go back. Prayers, we understand, are underway. The members of their family. So we pray that even in this gathering, that we may reveal that calm that shall be pleasing to thee, and that we shall await words in a spirit of Christ in thy holy name. Amen. That was the Reverend Luther Holcomb, who is the Executive Secretary of the Dallas Council of Churches and who was to have uh, given the invocation here for the President's address today. As you can imagine, there are many stories that are coming in now 
as to the actual condition of the president. One is that he is dead. This cannot be confirmed. Another is that uh, Governor Connolly is in the operating room. This we have not confirmed. Another is, and apparently this is correct, that one of the Secret Service agents, whose job it was to guard the life of the president, was killed in his uh, line of duty. The president was whisked from the scene of the attempted assassination, or assassination depending upon his condition, of course, at this hour, uh, by bus to Parkland Hospital, which is located about a mile and a half from uh, this site, which would make it about three miles from the site of the shooting. It is a city county hospital here, and uh, the president uh, undoubtedly is in the emergency room at that hospital, which would be on the first floor of uh, Parkland. No uh, word as yet. We are awaiting something more official. It is, of course, difficult, certainly, uh, to go on scanty reports uh, of uh, something like this. This is the first time that the life of a president has uh, been, uh, has been uh, uh, taken or possibly uh, taken in some time. Am I too close? Of course, the, uh, the uh, time in the House of Representatives when uh, the Congress was uh, uh, shot up for a while, as uh, my memory serves me, I think there have been three assassinations in the history of presidents. Uh, President uh, Lincoln, of course, President uh, Garfield, and President McKinley, the uh, three who uh, have uh, died uh, by the hand of an assassin while in office. The crowd now beginning to get up and leave. Uh, most of them, of course, unsure as we are at this time as to just... That was Eddie Barker at our affiliate KRLD in Dallas, Texas. This is Walter Cronkite back at the CBS Newsroom in New York. We have just been advised from Dallas that blood transfusions are being given to President Kennedy. However, two priests have been called for and have entered the emergency room at Parkland Hospital where he rests after the assassination attempt, which now was about a half hour ago. Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly are stunned, but they are at the bedsides of their husbands uh, at Parkland Hospital. As we told you, President Kennedy lies in the emergency room. Governor Connolly of Texas also shot, is, been taken, has been taken to the operating room. Members of the White House staff have gathered in the waiting room at the Parkland Hospital in the buff-walled hallways there. They're standing around now waiting for the word from the room. There was a report that a person had been arrested in this assassination attempt, and KRLD in Dallas did get an audio tape, did an interview, that is, with a man who said he saw the arrest. Let's listen to some of that uh, interview. Story building, and as I told you earlier, a youngster said that he saw a colored man fire three times from the window of that building. I was in a car in the presidential caravan, about seven cars behind the president's car, as we made the turn here at the intersection of Elm and Houston, I heard first a loud report. It sounded to me like a giant firecracker. Then in quick succession, two more, immediately in front of me, I saw people begin to fall on the grass and run for bushes in a park area here. Then police officers ran on the scene, and there was a wild general search throughout this entire neighborhood. Finally, one of the officers found a small colored boy who said that he saw a man fire from about the fourth floor window of the school but depository building. Now, a white man only has been escorted from the building. The fire department had earlier uh, come upon the scene with gear, and there was a room-to-room -room search of this building, which has two, four, six, eight, nine floors. The building right across the street diagonally from the Dallas County Courthouse. So as on the, the men the officers were looking for, or perhaps one of them, has been taken from the building, but now I see police officers running back toward the entrance of the Texas School Book Depository building, and evidently they are going to continue searching in that building for the would-be assassin of the president. This is Jim Underwood in Dallas. Back to CBS News. In New York, the New York stock that, uh, yes, and this afternoon, that's five minutes ago uh, after the market took a violent downturn at the news of the assassination attempt against President Kennedy. Let us recall for you now what has transpired in this. 
KRLD is reporting they've been told by somebody in the hospital the president is dead. Only a rumor, but they've been told that. KRLD is saying. Well, that's a repeat of something that you heard reported to you directly a moment ago from KRLD television in Dallas, and that is the rumor that has reached them at uh, the hotel that uh, the president is dead. Totally unconfirmed, apparently, as yet. However, let's go back to KRLD in Dallas. Operating room, we do not know what his condition is, but the report is that the president is dead. This is not confirmed. This is something that, okay, this is something that the uh, word just came to us a minute ago. The word we have is that President Kennedy is dead. This we do not know for a fact. The word we have is that he is dead, that he was sh shot by an assassin at the intersection of Elm and Houston Streets, uh, just as he was going into the underpass. The word we have is from a doctor on the staff of Parkland Hospital who says that it is true. He was in tears when he told me just a moment ago. This is still not officially confirmed, but as I say, the source would normally be a good one. President Kennedy on his second visit to Texas. The first time he came here, uh, actually the third time. I remember he came here uh, when he was a senator from uh, Massachusetts a few years ago. And uh, I recall uh, the time he uh, came into uh, the airport here and uh, there was no one on hand to meet him. He was not as well known then as he is now. And an airline's public relations man took him into town. He was here to address a convention and no one uh, was on hand to greet him. So the president rode in with a PR man from an airline. The next time he came, he was the standard bearer of the Democratic Party. That was in 1960. The crowd turned out for him then. This is, of course, an area where there has been a tremendous amount of dissension in the ranks of the Democratic Party. Uh, it is an area where there has been, of course, a tremendous amount of feuding on the part of a group that uh, considers itself to be the extreme right wing. As to the visit this time, after Adlai Stevenson, our ambassador to the United Nations, ran into uh, problems. He was spat upon by one man. He was uh, hit in the head with a placard by a lady. The talk was that the president should not make this trip. However, it was decided that the security precautions were such that he could make it without any problems. And now, the word that we have is that the president of the United States is dead. Dead at the hands of an assassin's bullet the word is that it was a 25-year-old man that he shot from a window in a building that I can best describe as being a factory loft that houses school books near the edge of the downtown Dallas area. It's uh, just across the street, catty cornered uh, from the county jail, ironically enough. The uh, shots apparently were fired as the motorcade started to go under the triple underpass. If you uh, have been in Dallas, you may be familiar with the triple underpass. It's uh, where three of the main streets come together at the west end of the business district and they're funnel under the uh, railroad tracks that uh, feed into the Union Terminal. The uh, motorcade was to have gone from there on to uh, this trade mart uh, where we are now. A trade mart that is fast emptying of people, little clusters crowded around. Uh, most of these people uh, uh, are the civic and business leaders of the community. The uh, man who made the announcement a moment ago that the president had been shot. Well, now, here is Luther Holcomb, the Dallas Council of Churches uh, executive secretary uh, at the uh, podium. Here is Dr. Holcomb. His microphones have uh, apparently not been turned on. The word that we have is that the president Perhaps this is uh, official now, and this is the word that will come from the podium. He's at the podium, and he gets an opportunity to uh, speak. It is official the President of the United States has been assassinated in Dallas, Texas. He fell victim of an assassin's bullet just as his motorcade went to go into 
the underpass just west of the downtown area that would lead him to this site that had been prepared for his luncheon. Now to the podium. You want to commend the spirit of the the pastor of one of the uh, largest Methodist congregations in the world. The word was not given to the crowd, but we understand that the president is dead. This we do not have an absolute confirmation on, but uh, this is the word that we have. As we said a few minutes ago, uh, he apparently died in the operating room at Parkland Hospital, which is the city county emergency hospital here located about a mile and a half from this building. The president uh, and his party have been in Texas now since yesterday. They arrived in San Antonio, then to Houston, then to Fort Worth last night. He walked into a big crowd of some six to 8,000 this morning in a parking lot in downtown Fort Worth. The fears here were that had the president had a problem in Dallas, it would have been at the airport upon his arrival. But that was Eddie Barker at our affiliate KRLD in Dallas, Texas, speaking from the room where President Kennedy had been scheduled to make an address to three Dallas organizations, but an assassin's bullets cut him down on the way to that meeting from the airport. Here is what happened this morning just an hour ago. It has been one hour since that electrifying flash came over the wires that bullet shots had been heard to ring out in the Kennedy motorcade. President Kennedy arrived at Dallas Airport from Fort Worth, Texas. It was the third stop on his swing of Texas that began yesterday, a swing that up to then had been wildly greeted by thousands of Texans. He had been given a warm Texas welcome. He arrived at the airport and with Mrs. Kennedy and Governor John Connolly of Texas climbed into an open limousine to drive through streets crowded with cheering Texans. About two-thirds of the way to the downtown hotel where he was scheduled to make a speech, as his car approached a railroad underpass, three shots were heard to ring out. Mrs. Kennedy was heard by reporters nearby to scream, Oh, no! The president, blood gushing from a wound in the head, slumped into her lap. Governor Connolly, slumped onto the floor of the limousine. It was later determined that he had wounds in the chest. We also have just heard that perhaps Vice President Johnson was wounded in the arm in this instant. He was seen entering the hospital at least, holding his arm, and has not been seen in the corridors of the hospital with the waiting White House aides since. At any rate, after that shooting incident, of course, pandemonium broke out. The Secret Service men, well-trained in their job, immediately began fanning out into the crowd looking for the assassin. A report has it that the man has been arrested, that he was operating from a second-floor window 
Oddly enough, got a corner from the county jail, fired from that window almost down into the limousine, like it is said, shooting fish in a barrel. The limousine speeded up then and was used under police escort, of course, to rush the president to a nearby hospital, Parkland Hospital. He and Governor Connolly were taken into the emergency room of the hospital. Shortly afterwards, Governor Connolly was removed from that room and taken to the, emer to the operating room of the hospital. The president left in the emergency room because aides said that the facilities there were quite adequate. The president's own physician rushed into the room shortly after that. He was on the tour with the president. Pints of blood have been rushed into the room for transfusion purposes, and two priests were called to the room. There is the report in Dallas you heard from our affiliate there, Eddie Barker, that the president is dead, but that has not been confirmed by any other source. And as late as 15 minutes ago, it was reported by aides outside in the corridor that he was still alive. The extent of his injuries, whether they are indeed critical or not, is not known either. It was just an hour ago that the incident took place. We have just learned, however, ever that Father Huber, one of the two priests called into the room, has administered the last sacrament of the church to President Kennedy. Regarding the probable assassin, the sheriff's officers have taken a young man into custody at the scene, a man 25 years old. We, are re we just have a report from our correspondent, Dan, rather in Dallas, that he has confirmed that President Kennedy is dead. There is still no official confirmation of this, however. It's a report from our correspondent, Dan, rather, in Dallas, Texas. Vice President Lyndon Johnson, as we said, has not been seen in the corridors of the Parkland Hospital. He was uh, said to be, by some, to perhaps have been slightly wounded in the arm. He was seen going into the hospital holding his arm at any rate. Mrs. Lyndon Johnson says that the Vice President, though, we just have this information, is fine. Mrs. Lyndon Johnson was taken back into another first floor room where Johnson originally had gone and ask if her husband had been wounded, she has replied negatively. Secret Service operators then uh, took her away and there were no more questions permitted. The Vice President is on the scene. If, as Dan Rather reports, uh, it turns out that President Kennedy has been assassinated, is dead from the injury suffered an hour ago in Dallas, Texas. We have no further information on the condition of Governor John Connolly of Texas, who was shot in the chest by this assassin's bullets. Uh, he was taken to another room of the hospital and no further information on him so far. Mrs. Kennedy was in the car, as we said, with President Kennedy. He slumped into her lap and she is said to be bearing up reasonably well stunned, but not in a state of shock as yet. She was seen crying in the corridors of the hospital. Bill Stinson, an assistant to Governor Connolly, says he talked to the governor in the hospital operating room. He says the governor was shot just below the shoulder blade in the back. Stinson said he asked Connolly how it happened, and he said, I don't know, I guess from the back. They got the president too. Stinson said that he asked Connolly if there was anything he could do, and Connolly replied, just take care of Nellie for me. Nellie is uh, uh, Governor Connolly's wife. Governor Connolly could very possibly have been shot in the uh, back uh, with the assassin's bullet still coming from the front of the car. He rode in a small jump seat in the center of the back of the specially built presidential limousine, specially built for such uh, public uh, performances such as this. As a matter of fact, the car is so built that the president sits higher than he would in a normal automobile so that the crowd can get a good look at him. But as it turned out today, so that an assassin can also get a good shot at him. Further information here. The Catholic priest who helped perform the last rites, Father Huber, Dallas said that he did not believe the president was dead at that time. 
the priest left the emergency operating room at Parkland Hospital and walked out of the hospital. There has been, just a moment, uh, that information does not bear directly on the condition of President Kennedy. It has comes from Kansas City, Missouri, where our affiliate KCMO says that Mrs. Bess Truman has told the KCMO that former President Truman is too upset to comment on today's tragic developments. As we said, there has been no word at all on the official word from the doctors at Parkland Hospital or the White House staff on the extent of the president's uh, wounds. Mrs. Kennedy uh, is in the hospital, as we said. So is Mrs. Connolly, the governor's wife, as are indeed most members of the White House staff. He was carrying a large staff with him on this uh, tour to Texas. It is believed that a gap in the motorcade perhaps saved Vice President Johnson from being a target of the assassin today. The gap had opened up in the motorcade just before the assassin's bullets rang out. The priest who were with Kennedy, what the two priests who were with Kennedy say that he is dead of his bullet wounds. That seems to be about as close to official as we can get at this time. They w did see the president just a few moments ago, and this is the bulletin that has just cleared uh, from Dallas that the two priests who were in the emergency room where President Kennedy lay after being taken from the Dallas street corner where he was shot say that he is dead. Our man Dan Rather in Dallas reported that about 10 minutes ago too. Trying to, there's another picture taken just moments, just moments, split moments before the assassination attempt is here. Let's see if we can get a real close up of that picture. It has just arrived. It shows the smiling Mrs. Kennedy and the president in the front seat of the car, in the back seat of the car. Mrs. Connolly and Governor Connolly, you cannot see behind Mrs. Connolly. The assassin took dead aim. He got the president apparently with the first shot in the head and then Governor Connolly with the next two shots. As we've reported to you, the New York Stock Exchange has closed as a nation. If these reports are true, prepares to go into morning. The stock exchange closed after prices began tumbling as word spread rapidly uh, through the floor of the exchange of this event in Dallas. All stock exchanges apparently are now closed. The New York cotton and wool exchanges, the American stock exchange, the coffee and sugar exchanges are closed. Accounting for you again, the succession of events. In Dallas, Texas this morning, President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas shot as their motorcade proceeded from Dallas airport to downtown Dallas where the president was scheduled to make a speech. The assassin per perhaps succeeded, word is that he did, in killing President Kennedy. The president taken to Parkland Hospital, where a moment ago two priests left the room and said they understood the president was dead. Our own reporter in Dallas also says that he has information that the president is dead. This official word has not come, however, from Parkland Hospital as yet. A Secret Service man was also killed in the fusillade of shots that came apparently from a second story window. Now from Washington, government sources say that President Kennedy is dead. Those are government sources, still not an official announcement. But government sources in Washington, the priests who left the emergency room, our correspondent Dan Rather in Dallas, say that this is the information that the president is dead. A television newsman, Hal Luff, said that he looked up just after the shot was fired and saw a rifle being withdrawn from a fifth or sixth floor window of a nearby building. He said a policeman fell to the ground, pulled his pistol and yelled, get down. 
probably to attempt to return the shots. Earlier today, President Kennedy had been in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, yesterday, he was in San Antonio. Today, he was in Fort Worth this morning. He addressed a breakfast meeting, as did Mrs. Kennedy of some 2,200 cheering people. Mrs. Kennedy, uh, very attractive in a pale beige dress and a pillbox hat, had gotten a standing ovation from that crowd and had proved uh, to be quite a campaigner in Texas in these last two days and was getting a lot of plaudits from the old political pros for that. President Kennedy himself rose rather early and went out into a parking lot near the hotel in Dallas where he addressed uh, informally a rather large crowd of people and uh, had pleased them with his quips about the fact that he was uh, sorry that he uh, could not bring Mrs. Kennedy with him down to that particular meeting, but that it took her a little longer to get organized than, than it did him, uh, but that, uh, as he said, it's worth it. And the crowd laughed and applauded and, and enjoyed the quip. The president then went on to the breakfast meeting, and uh, shortly thereafter, his plane took off from Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth and flew him to his rendezvous with death, apparently, in Dallas, Texas. At the airport in Dallas, uh, the, uh, and throughout the streets of Dallas, the Dallas police had been augmented by some 400 uh, policemen called in on their day off because there were some fears and concerns in Dallas uh, that, uh, that there might be demonstrations, at least, that could embarrass the president. Because it was only on October the 24th that our ambassador to the United Nations, Adley Stevenson, uh, was assaulted in Dallas, uh, leaving a dinner meeting there. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital in uh, Dallas, but we do not know uh, to where he has proceeded. Uh, presumably, he will be taking the oath of office shortly and become uh, the 36th President of the United States. President Kennedy at Dallas Airport this morning uh, was cheerful and waving. It had been quite a triumphal tour of Texas over the last 48 hours. Uh, there were hundreds of people crowded around the, uh, the president uh, at the airport, wildly cheering. There had not been any outstanding demonstrations. Nothing like that, the demonstrations that greeted Adlai Stevenson, uh, the RUN ambassador in Dallas, as I was telling you a moment ago, on October the 24th, when uh, a lot of banners saying, uh, get out of the UN and uh, uh, coexistence is appeasement and that sort of thing, uh, greeted him at a meeting. He was greeted by hecklers in uh, the uh, Dallas auditorium where he spoke. And then as he left the hall, uh, a lady demonstrator there uh, hit him over the head with uh, a, one of her picket signs. Uh, he wasn't uh, badly injured, but he was obviously shaken by the experience. Uh, the lady uh, later said that she was pushed from behind, and uh, that's why uh, the, the sign fell and hurt uh, Adley Stevenson, or rather, rather uh, uh, struck him. He wasn't badly hurt. As we told you a moment ago, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas today. He was shot in Dallas at 12.25 as his car proceeded through the crowded streets of Dallas. He died 35 minutes later in the Dallas Parkland Hospital. Governor John Connolly of Texas was also shot by the assassin. The condition uh, in which Governor Connolly now is, we do not know as yet, but apparently he is conscious and has uh, talked to an aide there. Vice President Johnson was in a following car and was apparently not hurt. He has left the hospital and has gone to an unknown destination uh, where it is assumed he will shortly take the oath of office as the President of the United States. Pictures of the President. We have also, uh, we're beginning to hear now from 
points around the world, of course, in a succession of messages that will be coming in. Uh, Dan Shore reports from uh, Paris, that uh, from Germany, that uh, uh, Prime Minister Erhardt of Germany heard the news en route back to Bonn from Paris. And uh, uh, of course, Dan Shore said, not knowing at the time that he cabled us a few minutes ago that the president was dead, said that Erhardt would probably postpone his visit to Washington. It seems almost certain that that would be the case now. Here are some pictures taken of President Kennedy earlier today. Here is one from Fort Worth, where President Kennedy is shaking hands with a mounted member of the Tarrant County Sheriff's Posse. This was right after he made that outdoor speech that I told you about just a little while ago. And another picture of the President and Mrs. Kennedy at that Chamber of Commerce breakfast at Fort Worth about which I was telling you. The President seems to be applauding Mrs. Kennedy as uh, he had been doing for two days because she was making a big hit in Texas. Here he is greeting that crowd in the parking lot in uh, Fort Worth. As I told you, before the Chamber of Commerce breakfast, the crowd to which he said he was sorry Mrs. Kennedy uh, couldn't uh, address or be with, but that it took her a little longer to get organized in the morning than it did him. But as he said, it's worth it. And here is a picture of the president uh, also at that uh, outdoor meeting this morning in a more formal pose. Uh, and here is Governor Connolly of Texas, who uh, was shot in the same assassination attempt. Lyndon Johnson, now the President of the United States, uh, stands here uh, in this group also. Apparently, the police are not, uh, not uh, convinced that they have the assassin, the young man who they are questioning. They have spread a dra giant dragnet around the city of Dallas. And uh, they say that they're searching for a white man, about 30, of slender build, weighing about 165 pounds. They say that he apparently shot the president with a 30-30 rifle. That's a very high-powered and accurate rifle, which is a very popular rifle among uh, the game hunters of Texas. Senator. Yarborough of Texas, said to have collapsed in sobs as he told reporters of the slain of President Kennedy. Automatically, of course, the mantle of the presidency of the United States falls now to Vice President Johnson, a native Texan uh, who was riding in the car uh, behind the president, but perhaps because of the fact that the president's car had run just a little bit ahead, uh, was not a target of the assassin also. The assassin, who apparently was a very good shot, shooting from a, a fifth or sixth floor window across the street, it is believed, so that his aim had to be over at least a uh, 100 uh, feet, it would seem, perhaps more, uh, drilled the president in the head and uh, Johnson and uh, Connolly in the chest. and. Uh, uh, the vice president had been closer, perhaps he would have had time for a shot there, too. We're going to keep you advised of the tales as they come in here to our news desk in New York. Let me recount for you this day's tragic development so far. President Kennedy has been assassinated. He was shot in his open limousine as he proceeded from Dallas Airport to uh, the downtown Dallas area for a scheduled speech. He was shot at about 12.25 uh, Eastern time today and 35 minutes later died with head wounds in Parkland Hospital in Dallas. Governor John Connolly of Texas riding in the car with him was also shot, but we do not have late details on his condition. 
Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly were in the automobile, the open limousine with the president and the governor. The president collapsed into her lap with his wounds. She was heard to cry, oh no, before the car was speeded to the hospital uh, to take uh, President Kennedy and Governor Connolly there. Blood was rushed to the hospital and transfusions that it was hoped would save the president's life. Uh, these failed. Catholic priests were called to the hospital and administered last rites to the president. Vice President Lyndon Johnson was in the motorcade in a car immediately following the president. He is in Dallas and presumably will take the oath of office as this nation's 36th president there in Dallas uh, very shortly. The assassin, we do not know whether he has been caught or not. There is a dragnet out for a man, however, in Dallas who has been described as a white man about 30. He apparently fired from the fifth or sixth floor window of a building on the motorcade route, firing almost directly down into the automobile carrying the president. President Kennedy is dead of an assassin's bullet in the 46th year of his life and in the third year of his uh, administration as President of the United States. This is Walter Cronkite at our CBS Newsroom in New York. And now if Charles Collingwood is standing by, Charles will sit in here to keep you advised of further details uh, as this tragic day goes on. Charles? The entire nation has been taken up with the tragedy of the assassination of President Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. We've told you all that we know of the confused events that transpired this morning and early afternoon in the rest of the nation. The president died about 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, according to the reports which we have had. That was about an hour after the assassin's bullet felled him while he was riding in the car through downtown Dallas, Texas to go out to an engagement and part of his tour of Texas. You've heard the reports that Governor Connolly was also wounded, though apparently not as seriously, and that Vice President Lyndon Johnson, who was in the motorcade, apparently not wounded, will soon be taking at some undisclosed spot the oath of office as the 37th president of the United States. Mrs. Kennedy, who was riding beside the president, into whose lap the president fell when he was shot, is still at the hospital. She was not harmed. The White House spokesman has refused to comment on her condition. Vice President Johnson was, of course, under heavy guard by the Secret Service officials who were with the presidential party. He went to the hospital and then was taken from there by White House officials to another spot in Dallas, Texas. The Secret Service has always known that it is impossible completely to protect the President of the United States on occasions such as this. There's always been the chance that any president might be killed in a crowded situation with windows overlooking the street in an open car such as presidents of the United States customarily travel, trusting in the good faith of the fellow citizens of this country. President Kennedy, we are told, was shot in the right temple. And according to jo Dr. George Berkeley, the White House medical officer, the White House physician, it was a simple matter of a bullet right through the head. The shooting, as we have told you, occurred as President Kennedy and his wife, riding with Governor Connolly of Texas and Mrs. Connolly, were riding in the familiar White House bubble top, which is usually shipped from Washington, in which the president can ride, which is equipped with facilities for the Secret Service to ride along with him was shot in that open car as he drove through the crowd of approximately 250,000 people in downtown Dallas. As it neared a triple underpass, which leads out from the center of 
Dallas toward the trademark where the president was to address a luncheon. There were several bursts of gunfire. Most of the witnesses agree that there were three clearly audible. And the president and Governor Connolly of Texas slumped into the seats of the limousine. The new president, Lyndon Johnson and Mrs. Johnson, left the hospital where they went with the presidential party. Newsmen have had no opportunity to question them. The horror of the assassination was mirrored in an eyewitness account by Senator Ralph Yarborough, a Democrat of Texas, who had been riding three cars in the long motorcade behind President Kennedy. He told reporters, you could tell that something awful and tragic had happened. Senator Yarborough's voice was breaking, his eyes red-rimmed, as he said. I could see a Secret Service man in the president's car, leaning on the car with his hands in anguish, anger, and despair. I knew then, said Senator Yarborough, that something tragic had happened. That was the way the news came, not only to those of us far away from Dallas, but to those in the presidential entourage itself. It happened so quickly, they, the cars were separated. It was not clear at first where the shots came from. That confusion resulted there and everywhere else, and there are still a great many loose ends to be tied up. The president apparently died 30 minutes, roughly, after the shot was fired. Governor Connolly, who was wounded twice, apparently through the back, was reported in satisfactory condition. Presumably, the White House staff and President Johnson will go through some time in the next few minutes, if indeed it has not already happened, with the ceremonies of taking a formal oath of office to succeed the slain president. One reporter on the scene said that he saw a gun emerge from an upper story of a warehouse which commanded the presidential route through Dallas. John F. Kennedy was the first president to be assassinated since William McKinley was shot in 1901. It was the first death of a president in office since Franklin D. Roosevelt died of cerebral hemorrhage at Warm Springs, Georgia in April 1945. At that time, the Vice President Truman was in Washington and was able to take the oath of office in the White House with, in a fairly short time. Undoubtedly, Vice President Johnson will succeed to the presidency through an oath of office in Dallas, Texas this afternoon. Police have already spread a dragnet around the city searching for the assassin. The man being sought, yes? Bob Crowley's just taking a walk through Manhattan. The people on the streets and things. Come, Bob. Want to put the mic between the two? Yeah. Like most Americans, Bob Trout was caught unawares and went through this city of New York unawares by this. Bob, what did you see? Well, I had heard, Charles, a few moments ago, and I just took a walk of almost a mile through uh, Fifth Avenue and Madison Avenue here in New York City. And it was curious, there's not a single shot closed uh, when Franklin Roosevelt died so suddenly. The shops, somehow the word got around the shops closed and there were pictures of Mr. Roosevelt in shop windows in Fifth Avenue with, draped in black. But I haven't seen a thing like that. No bank is closed. The post office is open uh, here uh, very close to this building in Lexington Avenue. And most people are going about their business as if they hadn't heard yet, but the automobile radios are blaring out. Uh, and uh, when a car stops, people form little knots around it, for, you know, when it stops for, for a red light. But the strange thing is that some people have heard, and about uh, every other block or so, you see people weeping openly in the street. I saw one man leaning against a lamppost with a handkerchief pressed to his eyes. And uh, in two churches nearby, one is St. Bartholomew's and Park Avenue, one St. Thomas and Fifth Avenue, people are streaming in, and most of them weeping as if they're going in to pray. The only church bell I heard is uh, on the Catholic Church, quite close by on 43rd Street, uh, wh which is now tolling, which is just outside this building, actually. It's very odd, about nine-tenths of the city going about its business as if it doesn't quite know. And, oh yes, I passed a school building, and the school had just come out, and every school child was weeping. The girls, they had handkerchiefs, the boys were crying, everybody was weeping as he came, all the children. But most people seem as if they don't know, the ones that do, very, very deeply affected.
strange. That's an experience which has been shared by something like 150 million people, isn't it? As uh, the news came at this hour when people were having lunch or going about their ordinary affairs. We still have uh, no fresher reports from Dallas of uh, what is transpiring there. It is, as far as we know, official and without doubt that the President of the United States has been assassinated and is dead as the result of an assassin's bullet in Dallas, Texas. CBS News will stay on the air live from this newsroom in New York City throughout this day to keep you up to the minute on the latest developments in the assassination of the President. Vice President Johnson, who was with the presidential party, is expected to take the oath of office as the 37th President of the United States at any time this afternoon. The word, of course, has begin, begun to spread throughout the world. In Rome, Cardinal Francis Spellman, there for the Ecumenical Council, said that he is shocked and grief-stricken to hear of President John Kennedy's death. As this afternoon goes on and as the word reaches leaders throughout the world, there will be many more messages of that kind. Governor Connolly, who was riding in the same car with the President and Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly, and who was also shot twice by bullets apparently from the same assassin, Governor Connolly is reported in serious condition and in great pain. The only words we have from him were those to an aide, take care of Nellie, Governor Connolly's wife. President Kennedy died, apparently, about half an hour after being wounded in his car, driving from downtown Dallas toward the Trade Mart, where he was to make an appearance. He was given the last rites by two priests of the Roman Catholic Church, who came out of the ward, uh, the emergency ward in the hospital at approximately 1.37 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the, the priests announced at that time to those who had gathered outside the hospital that the president was dead when they had seen him. And this brought audible sobs from the crowd, from scores of newsmen and White House aides who were gathered there. Senator Ralph Yarborough, a Democrat of Texas, who was in three cars behind the president, talking only a few minutes before the newsmen, had collapsed in sobs as he told witnesses of uh, told reporters of watching the slaying of the president. My colleague Eric Severide is here and Charles, while we're waiting for more details of the events in Dallas, it is obvious that all of us here as well as the rest of the country will have our thoughts about the president and his family and what must now happen in the next few days and after that uh, we will obviously have to turn to, along with the rest of the world, the consideration of the man who will be the new president of this country. Mr. Kennedy was the first president born in this century. Mr. Lyndon Johnson will be the second. He's in his mid-50s. It is clear from the evidence of recent years that Mr. Johnson's health is very good in spite of that heart attack of some years ago, which he suffered outside Washington, and when for a while his vigor was considerably reduced. He is in perfectly good uh, state of fitness now, so far as all his friends and doctors and everyone can testify. He is a man uh, very much of Mr. Kennedy's persuasion on both domestic and foreign affairs. He is well-traveled in this world, well acquainted with the leaders of the rest of the Western world. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, you know, was the new young force among world leaders, so much younger than those in France, in Britain, in Russia, or Germany, and Mr. Johnson will be still, I think, the youngest, except perhaps the new uh, Chancellor of Germany. But on the whole, the older men of an older time will still be in power. I think you perhaps have a new bulletin there, Charles, and um, if that is important, I'm sure you want to go with it. 
Well, uh, Eric, the bulletin is that our correspondent uh, in Dallas, Dan Rather, reports that the Dallas police have arrested a 30-year-old man who was found with a weapon in his possession. No other details are known at the moment, but a man has been arrested carrying a gun, and naturally the entire machinery of law and order in Dallas, both on the city, state, and federal level, have gone into action to try to apprehend the assassin and those who helped him. Uh, the bulletin is that a 30-year-old man has been arrested. One might say at this point that it is very much to be hoped that this assassin, whoever he is, is not connected with any particular political group, a so-called hate group or otherwise. Uh, this will result in a very great rending of the political flesh of this country. And the men who shot Lincoln, Garfield, McKinley, and Theodore Roosevelt, who spoke for an hour with a bullet in his chest once, non-fatal, were all purely individuals of an erratic and perhaps insane type, as well as the man who tried to shoot President Franklin Roosevelt in Florida in 1933 and did kill uh, Mayor Cermak of Chicago at that time. Uh, we can hope at this point that this person, whoever he is, is of a similar stripe and that there were no coherent political motivations or connections with this man. Otherwise, I think it's going to be very rough, don't you? Unquestionably, the, this is going to have a, an absolutely imponderable effect upon the political situation and upon the public attitude toward the causes in which the president was interested. In a sense, President Kennedy's assassination came out of the same venomous and supercharged attitudes that brought about the assassination of President Lincoln. Like that of President Lincoln, it was based on, perhaps at least, upon a racial issue. We have a bulletin from Texas now, which has to do with Governor John Connolly, who was wounded riding in the same car. Governor John Connolly has undergone an operation for the gunshot wounds in his chest. His condition is said to be serious, but his doctor said that his vital signs are good. A doctor said that Connolly had a good pulse and that his respiration is satisfactory. When the president died, six members of his cabinet were out of the country, flying to Japan. An hour and a half out of Honolulu, the secretaries were advised of the killing and immediately turned back. They were expected to speed back to Washington. The party, containing so member, many members of the cabinet, were on their way to a meeting with members of the Japanese cabinet. In the party were Secretary of State Dean Rusk, the Secretary of Commerce Luther Hodges, Secretary of Labor Wirtz, Secretary of the Interior Udall, and Secretary of Agriculture Freeman with their wives. As they were over the Pacific, uh, on their way to Honolulu, uh, as a way stop on their way to Japan, the uh, cabinet mission turned back to come back to Washington to face the, uh, the situation, the fresh situation caused by the death of the president. The entire world, of course, has been stunned by the president's assassination. The American Armed Forces Network in Europe made direct transmissions from Washington announcing the president's death to American servicemen and their families in Europe, for whom, of course, the president is commander-in-chief. In the Vatican, Pope Paul was immediately informed. News of the murder was received with dismay at the North American College in Rome, where the vice rector, Monsignor Chambers, said that he would inform the American cardinals and prelates who were dining at the moment. There's a six-hour time difference between this country and Rome. The Soviet news agency, TASS, carried the news as a flash on its international English language radio teletype circuit at 2.45 or 2.48 this afternoon. And this is what TASS, the Russian news service, said. It has just been officially announced that the United States President, John F. Kennedy, has died in hospital after an attempt was made on his life by persons, as believed, from among the extreme right-wing elements. Of course, we have no knowledge of the political motivations, or indeed the other motivations, of the person or persons who fired upon the president. We do have a report from Dallas, from our correspondent there, CBS News correspondent Dan Rather, 
that Dallas police have arrested a 30-year-old man who was found with a weapon in his possession. The shot was apparently fired from a warehouse building, a, a building which, which housed large numbers of school textbooks, which overlooked the route which the presidential motorcade followed on its way from downtown Texas to the trademark where the president was to speak. The reports continue to come in, but in a confused and fragmentary fashion. No one, however well prepared the Secret Service and the presidential organization may be, no one was prepared for this. It happened quickly in the midst of a large crowd of 250,000 people, and we are bringing you the reports as they come in to us here in New York just as quickly as we can. And of course, CBS News will stay on the air, and will stay on the air live throughout this day to keep you informed on the up-to-the-minute developments in the assassination of the president. Already, parallels are being drawn between other assassinations and southern, sudden deaths of American presidents in office. The last president to die in office was President Franklin Roosevelt, who was succeeded by Vice President Truman as President Kennedy, will be succeeded by Vice President Johnson. Looking back on the confused events of this morning, the president, Mrs. Kennedy, Vice President Johnson, were on a tour of Texas. They had a large number of engagements to fulfill. They were greeted at the airport with every evidence of enthusiasm. Mrs. Kennedy making uh, one of her comparatively rare trips with the president on a political errand. She, according to all accounts, had won everyone's heart. Although President Kennedy was greeted with some uh, banners and some Confederate flags flying, every observer who watched it felt that his arrival and his reception in Texas was a warm and friendly one. As he followed his schedule in a long motorcade of cars with officials and uh, with reporters following them, they drove from downtown Texas to a trademark where there was a large luncheon arranged and where he and Mrs. Kennedy were to make an appearance. As they left downtown Texas going toward a, an underpass, which is a, a landmark in Dallas, where three roads come together and go underneath the railroad. Shots rang out, apparently, from a building, a warehouse, overlooking the route of the parade. Those in the cars behind saw that the presidential car stopped. President Kennedy fell with his head in his wife's lap. Mrs. Kennedy said, oh no, the governor of Texas, Governor Connolly, slumped to the floor with bullet wounds in, in, in the back and apparently in the chest. There was a brief pause, then the cars rushed the wounded men to the Parkdale Hospital. The president was taken to the emergency ward, and as the minutes ticked by, two Catholic priests came in. Uh, there were rumors that he had died. There were rumors that uh, the wound was not so serious. Blood was brought for transfusions. When the two Catholic priests came out, they said the president was dead. This was later confirmed. Governor Connolly is in serious condition. He's undergone an operation for his gunshot wound, but the doctors say that his vital signs are good. Vice President Johnson, who was not wounded, went to the hospital, as did Mrs. Johnson, and was then, after half an hour, taken away or went off with the Secret Service men who are now as anxious to protect his life as they had been that of President Kennedy, and he will doubtless take the oath of office as the nation's 37th president in a short time. All over the world, there have been expressions of shock and grief. From Rome, where the ecumenical council is going on, the American cardinal, Cardinal Spellman, has expressed his great grief. The message has been carried to Russia by TASS. The European nations have been informed. 
Now, in our own capital, where much of the cabinet was away on a trip to Japan, their plane has turned back over the Pacific to bring them back. Let us switch now to Washington for a report on the mood in the nation's capital. Neil Strasser reporting. Washington was, of course, hit like a thunderbolt by news of the assassination attempt even before news of the president's death came to this capital. The first comments were, oh, God, how terrible on Capitol Hill. Senator Edward Kennedy, the president's brother, was presiding over the Senate today when first word came the president had been shot. An aide informed him, and he rushed from the Senate chamber. Senator Kennedy was signing some autographs, we were told. At the time the aide came up to him, the autographs flew all over the place when he got the word. Other senators in the chamber looked up, disturbed by the intrusion of the aide. When that same aide circulated quietly to them, they too went away dazed, saying very little. Some of the comments on the first news of the shooting, Senator Richard Russell of Georgia said the whole nation is shocked by this dastardly crime. Senator Everett Dirksen of Illinois said, oh God, this is the most distressing thing that could ever happen. I am shocked. Senator Mike Mansfield, the Democratic leader of the Senate, this is terrible. I can't find words. And a statement from Senator Harry Byrd of Virginia on the president's death, I am deeply shocked. The assassination of President Kennedy is a disaster to this nation and the free world. I cannot find words to express my personal distress. A statement from Senator Harry Byrd of Virginia. Members of both houses, after news of the shooting came, walked around dazed as, as uh, they tried to pick up details. Telephone switchboards at both the Congress and the White House were tied in knots. Those few remaining members of the official White House staff clustered around television sets. Mr. Kennedy's special assistant, Ted Sorensen, watched silently, left the room when reporters asked quietly if he had any comment. The president's other brother here in Washington, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, was having lunch at home when word of, the brother, of his brother's shooting reached him. A quick check with the Justice Department discloses that there is nothing in the law that prescribes when or how Vice President Johnson shall take the oath of office or who shall give it to him. The Constitution states only that he shall take the oath of office for the presidency before entering on the duties of the office. As you will recall, Calvin Coolidge was at his home in Plymouth, Vermont in August of 1923 when word came of the death of President Harding. Coolidge was immediately administered the oath of office by his own father, a justice of the peace. Later, the ceremony was performed again in Washington by a justice of the then Supreme Court of the District of Columbia. President Truman was in Washington when word came of the death of Franklin Roosevelt in 1945 and was given the oath in private at the White House by, I believe, a Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. So that is the way Washington is taking the news of President Kennedy's death. Many of these statements simply say, I cannot find words to express my shock or sorrow. We'll have more. This is Neil Strausser in Washington. CBS News, of course, will stay on the air live throughout this day to keep you up to the minute on the latest developments in the assassination of the president and in the inevitable aftermath that will follow it. Mrs. Kennedy was with the president uh, in the same car. She was not hurt. The president's mother and father were told of the, that the president was shot by a workman in Hyannisport, Massachusetts, where they are. The report came to them before it was known that the president had been killed. Reports were that neither the president's father, former Ambassador Joseph F. Kennedy, or Joseph P. Kennedy, rather, nor the president's mother had any comment to make when told of the shooting. The president's father is now a semi-invalid as the result of a stroke a few years ago, and he was napping when the word came. The president and Mrs. Kennedy had planned to spend Thanksgiving holiday at Hyannisport next week. We will have a live switch to the United Nations uh, video only Adley Stevenson at the UN accepting condolences. There is no so sound to this, but the United Nations, like other institutions, is uh, adjourning its deliberations to pay honor to the President of the United States. Pope Paul in Rome has been informed of the President's death. Cardinal Spellman, there in Rome for the Ecumenical Council, his voice shaking with emotion, said, I am saying the rosary for him now. The Cardinal 
said that President Kennedy's death, President Kennedy, of course, a fellow co-religionist of Cardinal Spellman, the Cardinal said it was a great loss to the country and to the world. Cardinal James McIntyre of Los Angeles and Cardinal Ritter of St. Louis called together the student priests of Rome's North American College to recite prayers for Kennedy. Cardinal McIntyre said that Cardinal Ritter and myself were having dinner there in Rome, it's dinner time there because of the time difference. When they heard the astounding news of the president's death, we are shocked, grief-stricken, our hearts are pained. West German Chancellor Ludwig Erhardt, who was to have visited President Kennedy on Sunday, was informed of the president's death while on the way back to Bonn from Paris. The news fills the German people with deep grief, said Chancellor Erhardt. All those who had the fortunate opportunity to make the personal acquaintance of President Kennedy, in particular the people of Berlin, where of course the president had recently visited, are deeply grieved in this hour. The premier designate of Italy, Aldo Moro, said his stature as a politician in his great country and on the international scene was growing in these years of a courageous policy of renewal. The reason for which he was struck in a mad way raises President Kennedy even more on the moral plane as a great defender of man's dignity and equality, said the Italian premier designate in Rome. French premier Georges Pompidou exclaimed, it is atrocious, it is frightful, I am overwhelmed. In Madrid, a foreign office spokesman said it is horrible, absolutely horrible, a most barbarous thing. Everyone here is horrified. And thus, international differences, disputes, are swept away in the moments of shocked, stunned grief. The Italian news agency, TASS, in reporting on its wires to its subscribers, the death of the, of the president, asserted that he had been killed by a right-wing American extremist. There is no confirmation of that. A man has been arrested in Dallas, a 30-year-old white man who was carrying a gun. We know nothing of his political persuasion. But Dallas, Texas is considered a center of conservative philosophy and finance. It was on October 24th that Adlai Stevenson, our ambassador to the United Nations, whom you saw a moment ago receiving condolences of representatives of other countries to the United Nations, that Adlai Stevenson making an appearance on United Nations Day in Dallas was spat upon by one heckler and struck with a placard by another. It was believed that uh, the strong emotions which run in Texas and other parts of the South may have been part of the context of attitudes which resulted in the tragic occurrence today. It was believed that the president's body will be moved shortly to Washington. Traditionally, funeral services for presidents who die in office are held in the Capitol. A presidential spokesman, the White House spokesman, told newsmen that Governor Connolly, who had been riding in the same open limousine with the president, had been wounded in the right chest. Connolly uh, was rushed into surgery in the hospital for a two-hour emergency operation. He is said uh, to be in serious condition, but the doctors say that his vital forces are strong. A lieutenant of the Secret Service, Lieutenant Kaminsky, said that the assassin's weapon appears to have been a high-powered army or Japanese rifle of about 25 caliber. The rifle had a scope sight on it, according to the Secret Service lieutenant. The entire building where the sniper was located was evacuated, and people working in the building at the time of the shooting were questioned. This morning, President Kennedy had telephoned Vice President John Nance Garner, who had been Roosevelt's vice president, as you remember, congratulating him on his 95th birthday, where vice president, former Vice President Garner lives in Uvalde, Texas. And according to this report, Garner's end of the conversation went this way. God bless you, Mr. President. You're my president, and I love you. I hope you stay there forever. Thank you, Mr. President. God bless you. The words of former Vice President John Nance Garner, 95 years old in Texas this morning, one of the last telephone calls 
that President Kennedy apparently made. This is what we know of the assassination as it took place this morning. President Kennedy was traveling in a motorcade through the streets of Dallas before a, a generally enthusiastic crowd, in some places a conspicuously enthusiastic crowd, of a quarter million people. With Mr. Kennedy in the open limousine, the White House bubble top, which is so familiar to those who have seen the president on television or in person as he travels throughout the country, with the president were Governor John Connolly of Texas, Mrs. Kennedy, and Mrs. Connolly. Suddenly there were shots. An eyewitness said that he saw them, saw them fired from a window in a warehouse building overlooking the route from downtown Dallas, Dallas out to the trademark where the president was to appear. Bullets hit Mr. Kennedy in the forehead, and Governor Connolly in the chest. The two men were seen to slump into their wives' arms. Neither Mrs. Kennedy nor Mrs. Connolly were hurt. One report has said, still not confirmed, that one of the Secret Service men accompanying and guarding the president was killed by the gunfire. Then, convoyed by police, the limousine raced off at top speed to Parkland Hospital, which was five minutes away. Meanwhile, police and Secret, Secret Service agents moved in on the assassin, searched the building, and an arrest of one man armed with a rifle is reported. The president and the governor were taken to the hospital's emergency room. The president was not moved from there and died there. The governor was moved to an operating room and after an operation is reported in serious condition, but the doctors appear to be hopeful. Dallas motorcycle officers who were ranging along beside the cavalcade took off uh, across a field in the direction from which the murderer apparently had fired. One officer raced to the foot of a nearby railroad embankment and climbed to the tracks above, gun in hand. No one knew quite where the shots had been fired for quite a long while. Apparently they were fired from a building and not from one of the knolls which rose above the road. White House Secretary, Press Secretary, Acting Press Secretary Malcolm Kilduff said that the president's body will be flown to Washington this afternoon. The Dallas Sheriff's Department said a rifle had been found on a staircase on the fifth floor of the building near the scene where it is now believed the, from where the shots were fired. It was a 7.65 Mauser, a German rifle, familiar to those who served in World War II. The German-made army rifle had a telescopic sight one shell was left in the chamber. Three spent shells were found nearby. Most of the witnesses, most of those who were in the cavalcade, as they attempt to recollect the sudden and confused events which took place, say that they heard three shots, which uh, checks with the fact that three shots had been fired, one still found in the Mauser with which the assassin was apparently armed. Democratic Senator from Texas, Ralph Yarborough, who, like most other Texas politicians these days, have been engaged in hot political infighting there, was riding three cars behind President Kennedy, and he told newsmen in a choked and emotional interview that you could tell that something awful and tragic had happened. Senator Yarborough said, I could see a Secret Service man in the President's car leaning on the car with his hands in anger, anguish, and despair. I knew then, said Senator Yarborough, that something tragic had happened. We continue to get reports from foreign countries as the word reaches the chiefs of state and simple people in other countries of the death of the American president. As is always happens on these occasions, Shock uh, is the dominating note of the reports from abroad. We learn from Washington that Mrs. Sergeant Shriver, the sister of the president, has been taken by helicopter from the White House to Andrews Air Force Base, presumably to fly to Dallas to join Mrs. Kennedy or perhaps to await there the return of the party from Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy, who was riding in the same car with the president, was not hurt, but has been taken to a quiet room in the hospital at, at, at this moment after the aftermath of the terrible moment that 
she had to go through in which the shot rang out and the president slumped down his head in her lap. Reports are still coming in. They do not perhaps add a great deal to the confusion of the events that we have been trying to sort out all day. But as they come into us, CBS News is going to stay on the air live from here throughout this day in order to keep you up to date on the latest developments in the assassination of the president and what happens next. The news agencies and our own correspondents who are keeping us informed from Dallas continue to send us reports bringing together the various pieces of information some confirmed, some unconfirmed, as they come in and as we begin to sort out the truth from the rumors of what has happened. The president's body has now been removed from Parkland Hospital. It was taken from there uh, shortly after his death in a long uh, cream-colored ambulance with the curtains tightly drawn. Mrs. Kennedy rode from the hospital in a passenger seat in the ambulance, which is a type of vehicle that does have two seats for passengers. She and the body of President Kennedy were escorted from the emergency entrance of the Parkland Hospital by two motorcycle officers. Mrs. Kennedy walked slowly from the hospital to the ambulance, looking around her, we are told, in a dazed manner and appeared to be in a state of shock. Those who saw her enter the hospital an hour and a half earlier said that she had not been hysterical and remained in control of herself throughout. Secret Service men uh, have directed police to remove spectators from the whole area. And now we have another report from Washington, Neil Strausser reporting. Three jet planes are now warming up at Andrews Air Force Base, presumably to fly members of the president's family to Dallas, Texas. As you've already heard, Eunice Shriver, the president's sister, has left the White House by helicopter, along with the president's aide and very good th friend, Theodore Sorensen, presumably on the way to Andrews Air Force Base. Comments coming in from Capitol Hill are uniform in sorrow and very much bipartisan. Democratic Senate leader Mike Mansfield told newsmen the death was a deep, personal, and tragic loss. Seated with Republican Senate leader Everett Dirksen in Mansfield offices off the floor of the Senate chamber, the Democratic leader told assembled reporters simply, he was a man who contributed so much and deserved so much more in return. Senator Allen Bible, Democrat of Nevada, said this is one of the great tragedies of our civilization. The world has lost a great champion, and the United States has lost a great and courageous president. Senator Jordan, Democrat of North Carolina, said the assassination was a great tragedy that has befallen this nation. The Speaker of the House and the next man in line for the presidency, after Lyndon Johnson, Speaker McCormick, issued this statement to reporters. This is a tragic event. I feel very inadequate in expressing my thoughts. The nation, said Speaker McCormick, has sustained a staggering loss, the significance of which is stupendous. Our country and the entire world will never forget President Kennedy. His leadership was superb in meeting the challenge of this period of world history. The warmth of his personality will never be forgotten. The relationship that has existed between the President and myself throughout the years has been very close and most friendly. In his tragic passing, I have lost a dear and personal friend. The statement of Speaker McCormick. We are told that an aide of Vice President Lyndon Johnson, now President Johnson, George Reedy, has arrived at the White House there can be very little delay in these times, of course, to have a new administration take over. As we told you, the law says that the oath of office can be given by almost anyone. By now, Johnson could already have taken it. It is presumed he will take it very shortly. This is Neil Strasser in Washington. President Kennedy's body has been removed from the hospital in Dallas, Texas, on the first stage of its journey back to Washington for what will be a state burial. Mrs. Kennedy accompanied the body in an ambulance from the hospital to the airport where it will be flown back to Washington. Walter Cronkite, whom, uh, who has been at this microphone all afternoon since the first word of the, of the president's death, 
has uh, been looking at the reports as they come in. Walter, have you discovered anything further than we've been uh, giving? Charles, nothing except, as you know, and as indeed have already reported, that now the messages are beginning to come in from around the world and from the cities of the United States, where a nation is in almost, I, I, would, I would say it advisedly, almost uncontrollable shock, it seems. They're weeping on the streets. Schools have to be dismissed. My own school was to, uh, dismissed because the children were weeping so much they couldn't stay in class. Quite a tragic day, as we all obviously know. Do you want me to relieve you a few minutes here? If I stay on the air, certainly, until all of this is... Right. We do have some word here as to as to um, what has uh, where some of the members of the uh, Kennedy family were at the time of the event in Dallas, the assassination. Uh, Bob Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, the uh, Attorney General of the United States, uh, we are told was at uh, lunch at the time it happened uh, at his home in McLean, Virginia. Uh, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover called the FBI office in Dallas and ordered an all-out investigation of the shooting, which, of course, could be expected. President Kennedy, as you've been told now, was uh, the first president to be assassinated since William McKinley, who shot to death in 1901. Six members of the Kennedy cabinet, as you also, I believe, have been told during the day, were out of the country on their way to Japan. Uh, their plane was called back an hour and a half out of Honolulu. Uh, they're expected, of course, to return immediately to Washington. It is anticipated that the new president of the United States, the 36th president of the United States, Lyndon Baines Johnson, will continue uh, the President Kennedy's policies with which he seemed to be in firm agreement